Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at black holes. So let's get started. Now, we're going to start by looking at the definition of a black hole. So it says that a black hole is a region in space where the pull of gravity is so great that nothing, not even light, can escape its pull. The escape velocity from close to a black hole is greater than the speed of light. And since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, then it's not going to be able to escape. It then says that black holes vary in size from as small as one atom to stellar black holes up to supermassive ones which have the mass of more than one million suns. There is evidence that supermassive black holes may be found at the centre of large galaxies. Stellar black holes are created when a very big star collapses. When stars four to eight times the mass of the sun explode in a supernova, they leave behind a dense core which collapses in on itself. Once the star has collapsed past a certain radius called the event horizon, not even light can escape from its gravitational pull. We'll talk more about this in another video when we look at the evolution of stars. From the perspective of a distant observer, time appears to be frozen at the event horizon of a black hole. And just to help you visualise this, I'm going to show you a quick animation. So if you imagine this is our warped space time and we've got our potential well there, and we've got this event horizon there for our black hole. So the event horizon is this pink or reddish ring. So if we click play here, you'll see the red hand on the clock moving around quite quickly. And if we then move this in towards the event horizon, you'll notice that the red hand on the clock is moving much slower. It's still moving, but it's moving much slower. But then if we bring it right into the event horizon, you'll notice that time appears to be frozen. And then if we move it back away again, you'll notice that time moves normally again. So we can conclude that time slows down near the event horizon of a black hole, but it then becomes frozen at the event horizon. We also say that the centre point of a black hole is called the singularity, where gravity becomes infinite. The distance from the centre of a black hole, i.e. the singularity, to its event horizon is called the Schwarzschild radius. This is the radius of a spherical mass where the escape velocity from the surface of the mass is equal to the speed of light. So here's our event horizon in the black hole, here's our singularity where gravity becomes infinite in the centre, and we're saying that the radius from the singularity to the edge of the event horizon is called the Schwarzschild radius. And we can actually calculate the Schwarzschild radius for different black holes. So we use this equation here, so it says the following equation is used to calculate the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole, where R Schwarzschild is equal to 2gm divided by c squared. So what do these symbols mean? Well, R Schwarzschild is obviously the Schwarzschild radius of the black hole measured in metres. G is the universal constant of gravitation measured in metres cubed per kilogram per second squared, we've seen that before. Capital M is the mass at the centre of the black hole measured in kilograms and C is the speed of light measured in metres per second. Just to point out, if you don't want to write out Schwarzschild each time, you could simplify this to R subscript S. And lastly, we're just going to look at how to detect black holes. So it says here that as black holes are invisible, their presence is detected by their effect on objects around them. So the first way of detecting black holes is via the emission of X-rays. It says that when matter is accelerated into a black hole, it collides with other matter and heats up to millions of degrees. When it gets hot enough, X-rays are emitted, so if we can detect the emission of X-rays in space, then that might suggest that there is a black hole. The next one is gravitational lensing, and it says that as gravity can bend light, and as a black hole has a very large mass, it is able to bend light that passes close by outside the Schwarzschild radius. This causes the star field around it to appear distorted, and detecting these distortions can indicate where a black hole is located. So here's a picture of the distorted star field, and you'll see you've got this circular patch of just black, and the middle and that suggests a black hole. And lastly we have binary x-ray systems and it says that if the black hole is close to a large star the two will orbit each other and material from the companion star is drawn into the black hole. The x-ray emitting pairing allows much more information on the size and mass of the black hole to be determined. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.